Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Uh, it's been a while since we've done a Unity lesson, so let's kind of jump back into it. So we, where we left our game off last, we had a working enemy system, we had our spawn manager, everything's looking really good. But what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about adding multiple levels or scenes to your game. So let's get started. I'm going to start actually by disabling my enemy spawner systems. Don't really need them uh, during this testing phase. And I'm actually going to disable my weapons as well, just so it's a little bit less distracting while I play the game. Never hesitate to disable or move uh, objects around in your game while you're playtesting and building. Uh, it does make it a lot easier. So you might notice that I have a couple new objects in my scene. I have a crystal here that's going to be our teleporter, what's going to teleport us to the next level. And then we actually have a coin here. Uh, we're going to start off by making it so when you walk and collide with the teleporter here, it's going to take you to scene two. And then eventually we're going to connect that. You can't go to the teleporter until you actually pick up the coin, but we'll add on that functionality later. So let's get started. Now, in order to make the script for this, it's actually pretty straightforward. So let's go to our scripts folder and let's create a new C -sharp script. I'm just going to call this level change. Let's take that script once it just completes its uh, creation here and drag it onto our teleporter. Perfect. All right, let's lo open up our level change here script. So we do have to add a new library here. So we're going to go using Unity Engine and we're going to go dot scene management. Uh, as I said, we call levels scenes inside of Unity. So we have to make sure that our code is able to use the scene management library. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to go down and we're going to do a void on trigger enter 2d okay we've done this before uh, with other objects and uh, we're going to switch it to other and then we're going to do something really simple here just we're going to say scene manager dot load scene okay and then basically we have to put which scene we want to load in there now we want to be able to use this script on multiple different levels and uh, so I think we should uh, have our scene name as a variable. We'll make it much easier for us so we can reuse this teleporter as a, uh, as a prefab. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to say a public and uh, Unity reads scenes as uh, integers. So we're going to say a public integer and I'm going to call this level to load. Okay, And then down here we are going to load our level to load. Excellent. That's all we really have to do. It is that simple. So when we, when an other object uh, enters the, the, the trigger of this teleporter, it's going to take the scene manager, which we can use because of the scene management library. We're going to use the command load scene, and we're going to load the integer, which we're calling level to load. Let's press control S. Let's go back to Unity. Now there's one more step we actually have to do before this works. And uh, actually see here when we click on our teleporter, you'll notice that it's asking which level we want to load. And currently it's loading level zero, which isn't really going to help us. So let's talk about scenes and kind of how they work. So down here in my scenes folder, uh, I have scene one, which is what I'm currently working on. But if I double click on scene two, you'll see I've started to build a separate scene here that has uh, my tile set grid in it. I've had my main camera and I've added my Cinemachine brain into that also. Don't forget that Cinemachine. Um, and then I've started on a scene three as well that doesn't really have anything other than the main camera. Okay, and we can kind of go back and forth to these scenes. But now we have to tell Unity which scenes to use in our game. We do that by going to File and then Build Settings. Up here, it says these are the three scenes that are currently in here. And you can just drag and drop new scenes into here as needed. Now you'll notice that my scene 01, which is right down here, actually has a number assigned of zero. And that's just because computers start counting at zero, so it goes zero, one, two. Now, when I go into this teleporter, I want to go to my second scene, which Unity refers to as scene one. Okay, so let's kind of do that. So we're going to go to teleporter and we're going to say load scene one. All right, let's go test it out and see if it works. Also in our teleporter, of course, we have a box collider that's marked as trigger. We have our script, all those other elements that we should know by now. All right, so game's running and let's go into our crystal. Okay, well, it did work. You notice we are in scene two up here. But nothing is in here right now. And uh, the reason why is it's loading the next scene, but there's no player in there, there's, there, there's no enemies, there's nothing. It's, so we, you, you could just add uh, a player into scene two, but this actually isn't the proper way to do it. Uh, because you know as you're progressing this game, you might uh, unlock new levels, new weapons, and if you're loading in your player as a prefab, uh, you really wouldn't want to have to start from uh, scratch every single time you advance to the next level. So we're gonna use a, a new command here that's gonna preserve our character across scenes. 
So let's go into our player controller script. So I'm gonna go for my player controller script here. And in my player controller script, right here in the start, uh, we are gonna use a, a new function here. We're gonna say, don't destroy on load. So what that's gonna mean is when we load in a new scene, it's not gonna destroy whatever we put in those brackets. And I just wanna put the game object into those brackets because uh, game object is whatever this script is attached to, which is the player. So press control S. Let's go back to Unity now, it's gonna compile. And let's go test it out one more time to see if it keeps our player. All right, so looking good, here we go. Awesome, so it's going into our next scene, everything's looking good. My camera's a little bit more zoomed in, which is odd. And if I move around, my camera is no longer following me. Now I did put my Cinemachine brain in scene two, as you remember I had mentioned. However, we actually have two cameras. We have this Cinemachine virtual camera that isn't in scene two. And it's actually set to follow the player. Um, so I can't just go put this virtual camera in there. It's not gonna be able to find the player properly. So what we're gonna do is very similar to what we did with the player, we're gonna create a very simple script that's not gonna destroy this camera here. So let's right click, create a new C-sharp script. I'm just gonna call this keep camera, okay? Let the script get created. We're gonna drag this script onto our camera and then we'll open it up in Visual Studio. Perfect, so we'll put this on here. Here's my keep camera, let's open it up. And all this is gonna do is just don't destroy unload game object. Perfect. Control S. Let's go back to Unity. It's going to compile and let's see if that works now. So now it should keep our player and our virtual camera that's being used by our sim machine. So we can go in here. Awesome. Now the camera's more zoomed out. As you can see, I haven't finished my level. That's something we'll worry about later, but my camera is tracking me. It's following my player and nothing is getting destroyed. Perfect, so that's kind of the first major part of the lesson done now, but I wanna create a system in which I can only go across levels once I've collected a certain object. And we're gonna do that using a bool, okay? So over here in my coin, I want it so when you pick up the coin, it allows me to go through the teleporter, okay? Pretty straightforward. So I'm actually gonna start by going back to my teleporter here and I'm gonna create a bool. A bool is just a true false statement, kind of like a like a switch you're turning on and off. We're gonna make a bool and we're gonna say has key, or you can do has coin or kind of whatever you want. I'm just using key because I'm interpreting that way. Uh, and then I'm gonna go down to here and then I'm gonna say if has key, and then if you have the key, then it's gonna transfer the levels. And just to be safe, uh, I always kind of, uh, this is just an old uh, habit I've gotten into. I'm gonna make sure that when my scripts start, it's gonna put the has key to false. You could define it as false up here, uh, but we're gonna say has key false down there. So it's gonna make it equal to false. And if you just use the bool's name, the assumption is that it's true. So this is saying if has key equals true, then you can load the level. Otherwise the level will not be able to load, okay? Um, so now, go back to Unity, let's just do a test so we can do a little proof of concept before we move ahead with our coin. Okay, so looking good. So I can't transfer levels now. Perfect, okay. So now what we need to do is make a script for this coin that's going to enable that has key bool. So let's make yet another C-sharp script. All right, and we're just gonna call this, uh, I don't know, coin pickup, you can call it whatever you want. And once the script creates, we're gonna drag it onto our coin over there. So we'll just drag it up here. All right, now our coin is marked as is trigger. Let's go to coin pickup. Um, and then in their coin script, let's just do a void on trigger enter 2D one more time, change the collision to other. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say game object dot find. Okay, so we're looking for a certain game object and I'm gonna look for my teleport. That's the string name of that crystal I have in the scene. And then on the teleport, we are going to get a component. And the component we're looking for is the level change script and let's initialize it. So we're gonna look for the teleport object. We're gonna grab the level change component off of it. Then we can grab the has key bool and equal it to true. And let's just uh, now destroy uh, the uh, game object as well. Okay, so now we'll actually destroy the coin. So when a other has a collider, enters the trigger of this object, it's gonna find the teleport 
uh, uh, object in the hierarchy. It's going to look for the level change component on that, which is our script. And then it recognizes the has key bool that we've created, and it's going to mark it to true. And then it's going to destroy the coin, so we don't have to worry about it again. So let's go back to Unity now and check to see if that works. Perfect. Let's hit play. And let's head on over. Okay, so once again, you see it's not letting me go through. And then we're going to go to our coin here. It's going to pick up the coin. Excellent. And if everything worked, perfect. We're in the nether scene now, and it's working great. So really quickly, let's uh, let's take our teleport object here and make it a prefab. And let's take our coin as well and make it a prefab. And now let's go back to scene two. Let's save scene one here. And let's go back to our prefabs folder. Let's take our teleporter, drag that in the scene, and drag our coin into the scene. And we're gonna tell our teleporter to actually take us back to level zero, which is level one, of course. So let's go back to scenes, let's go back now, and let's see if we can go back and forward between our scenes now. Okay, it's not working. Probably should move that coin closer so it's less of a walk. Uh, so we're gonna walk it over, go back to the crystal. Perfect. Pick up the coin, and we can go, whoa, that's an issue. Hold on, maybe it'll fix them the next time. Okay. Awesome, there's three of me now. So we have a very obvious bug here. Every time we're going back and forth, uh, we are, because we're not destroying our player, and we're going back to scene one where our player is initially located, it uh, spawns another player. Now there's a bunch of ways we can do this. Um, on level one, you can have the player start as a prefab, and that's perfectly acceptable. Um, but I'm gonna use this opportunity to teach about uh, doing a very simple null check, which should prevent this if we do it correctly, okay? So let's go to our player. Let's go back to our player controller script. Okay, and inside our variables, we're going to create a, another variable for our player. All right, we're going to call this a public static. A public static meaning there can only be one of this. Okay, and um, it's actually created everything here perfectly for us. A, we're going to create a public static on our player controller script, saying that there can only be one player controller script in our entire game, and then we're going to refer to it as instance, the only instance of it that can exist. Okay, then... What we're going to do here in the start, uh, we're going to say instance equals this. Thanks, uh, Visual Studio, making it handy for me, saying we're going to make the instance this object when the code starts. Okay, uh, but actually, we're going to sit. We're going to do with an if statement first. We're going to say uh, if instance equals null, meaning it doesn't exist. So if there's no instance in the world, then make the instance this instance. I mean, this is the only player controller. And then we'll do an else statement. Okay. Else uh, destroy game object. Okay. So what's happening is uh, we've created a public static, meaning there can only be one of the player controller in our entire game. That's what the static is referring to and referring to as an instance. And then we're going to say... If the instance, which is your player controller script on whatever object it's on, is, e is equal to null, so it's checking to see if there's any other in the world. Uh, if there's none else in the world, there's no other uh, player controller scripts in the world, it's going to make the instance this object. So this is now the only instance of it in your entire game. Otherwise, if, there are, if the instance is not null, meaning there's already an existing one in the game, it's going to destroy any new ones that occur. A little confusing, hard to wrap our head around, uh, but it should work, so let's go have a check here. Okay, so it's going to compile the scripts. And uh, I know I got my coin here, and I keep saying I should move it, so let's move it closer, so I don't have to run as far, and let's click play. Okay, so let's pick up our coin. Let's go back here. Now here's the moment of truth. Oh, perfect. It is not spawning duplicates of our player because we are using a simple null check and in an instant system to prevent that from happening. Excellent, I well, hope you found that helpful and uh, we will see you all later.